and welcome back to 25 Drive Live. My name is Alex Montanez. I am your host, and we have another great guest with us this week. This is Jenny Stone. Hello. Jenny Stone, now you told me what your position with Youth Impact is, but I want to hear it from you because I know I'll mess it up if I say it. So you tell us what your position is. My position. <laughs> uh, what's my job at Youth Impact? I just finished Cardio Club. Okay. Um, and what's cardio club? We do cardio dance um, for about an hour and a half every Monday. So sorry if I'm out of breath. <laughs> and, and, I, wasn't, I wasn't prepared to be on and, camera. Okay, good. Well, what's your official position with uh, Youth Impact? Okay, officially my title is Academic Supervisor. Okay. So I, um, I look over, we have about 160 youth involved in our program. Um, ages, most of them are aged 4th grade through 12th grade, and we make sure that they're doing well in school, and they're going to school every day, and so my job is to kind of oversee that and help them be successful in school. Okay, well, uh, you know, we decided, uh, we reached out to Youth Impact because we wanted to um, find out a little bit more about what their organization does, because I feel that it is very important in our community super important in our community, and uh, we want to make sure that everybody in Ogden and the surrounding areas knows about this because, uh, uh, as, I, as I mentioned, it's super important to have uh, a good, safe place. And, and I know I was reading on the website because I did a little bit of research. I know about you guys, and I've worked with you before, um, but one thing that I liked about it was, was that it was a safe place, mm -hmm. you know, for, for kids. And so can you kind of give us like a broad overview of what Youth Impact is, does, how it all came about, all that kind of stuff? Sure. Um, I'm so in love with Youth Impact. I've been there for five years. Um, and I feel like most people that walk through the door have no idea that it's there. And when, once they walk through it, they're amazed by what it is and what the facility has to offer. So what we do in the school year is we pick the kids up from school. Every single one of the kids, um, we pick them up from school. We pick up from 31 different schools in the Ogden area. We, we go, um, we pick them up from school. We take them to the facility. They have a snack after school. They come out to me in study hall and we help them with homework. And so it's usually me out there with about 30 kids, but we get volunteers from Weber State. Save my life. So, so the homework that you do is the, the homework that they have from the school during the day. Yeah. You're not giving them other homework or additional homework. Oh, no. Okay, no. Just, just check it. They'd hate me. Um, <laughs> no, so we're in there. We're doing times tables. We're doing flashcards with some of the younger kids, um, getting them caught up because sometimes... Many times we get kids who are not on level, so not on reading level. Um, I'm a certified teacher, and so um, I'm able to work with them, see where they're at, make sure that they're on track with where they're supposed to be. And um, so whether it's multiplication problems or it's AP world history, that's what we're doing in study hall. And then we hang out, and we all have dinner every night at 5 wow. o'clock. Um, we take the kids home. We drive them all home, drop them off at their front door, make sure they get in safe, um, and all of them get home around 7.30 at night. So uh, it, it sounds to me like you, there's someone from Youth Impact is with the children when you pick them up from school, at the facility, and then when you drop them off at their front door. Uh-huh. Okay. All the time. All the and, time. Yeah, and it's cool, and we say all the time, it's not daycare, um, because we do work with the older kids, um, 4th through 12th grade, but... Um, there's positive adult role models around them the entire time that they're at Youth Impact. And so the goal of Youth Impact is to keep them safe, keep them busy, let them try new things that they haven't tried before. Um, so we have not only the academic part of it or dinner, those are necessities. Right. But then we have, like my cardio club, but then we have snowboard club in the school year. We take about... 30 kids a day, sometimes up to Powder Mountain. Oh, that's amazing. How do, you, how do you afford to take 30 kids up to Powder Mountain? We have friends. We have friends in the community. Okay, okay. And that's how we afford to and, do almost everything. All right, well, tell us tell us about these friends in the community that um, make this all possible because it, 
if you have that many children, you got this big facility, and you're driving driving them around all over the place, picking them up, dropping them off, all those things. That takes cash. That takes a lot of money. So how you know how how does this all come about? How do you guys raise funds for Youth Impact? So we have um, we're almost entirely privately funded. And so by grants and by donations, um, we have people, we have something called the Century Club. People donate $100 a month, every single month, and they're part of the Century Club. And that's huge um, because we could rely on that all the time. Um, and then we have our grants who keep us going. But our partnerships in the community and Ogden, for example, um, I take, can I say names of businesses? Absolutely. Yes. Okay. So I take our kids um, who get straight A's. They get to go out to dinner um, with their academic trackers. There's a few academic trackers, and um, I work with the high school kids mostly. Um, but we take our straight A students out to dinner because that's what you do as a family. Like if your kid gets straight A's, um, you take them out to eat sure. or something, Absolutely. or you give them cash or whatever. A lot of people do that. But um, we look at Youth Impact kind of as a family mm -hmm. environment, and so we treat it like a family. So our kids get straight A's, we take them out to dinner. Um, Ravalis. Yeah. <laughs> you guys hooked it up. Yes. It was amazing. And for the kids to go in there and sit down and put a napkin on their lap, and the lights are dim, and they have a salad, and they have bread, and they have a nice dinner, and... Not only that, but menus are made up saying, congratulations, Youth Impact participants. That was huge to them. Such a big deal. Lucky Slice. They help us out a lot, too. They, you know, prepare us for our straight-A dinner, let all the kids in. And not only that, but for the people who work there to acknowledge yeah. that the kids are doing well is huge. And then they, they want to keep doing it, you know. And then our group gets bigger because, hey, how come you're not going to this straight A dinner? You know, and the last few years that we've been doing that, um, our grades have gotten better and better. That's and it's amazing. because of things like that. You know, Powder Mountain, we wouldn't be able to go yeah. snowboarding. Yeah. That's so expensive. And, and you're introducing them, like you mentioned, you're in introducing them to something they may not have the opportunity to do, to do on their own. Absolutely. So um, it sounds really great, and and we love to participate with these guys. Uh, I've been working with you for a few years now, mm -hmm. and uh, I uh, that's one of the other reasons why I I wanted to invite them onto the show is because um, they do so many great things. But I've I've seen it firsthand, and I've experienced the, the kids that you work with. Uh, Rob Hall, who is the is he's, is he the director? He's the director, right? He's yeah, the, the one he's that the head guy. Told me I was going to be on. Yeah, he he today. told you yeah. you were going to be on camera like today. No, uh, my hair was not brushed. Told him, so, <laughs> so um, you know, uh, but but I'm totally sold on what they're doing. Uh, the facility is amazing. Can can you take us through like a walk us through a virtual tour of what the facility looks like when you come through the build? You know, when you come through those front doors, what do people expect to see? What you know, what are they going to see? Okay, so people walk in. So we're located on the corner of 23rd and Grant. We're a glass brick building that people drive past all the time, and they don't even know that it's there. But once you walk in those front doors, we have um, our front door, you have to ring a bell. You have to get it buzzed in. And, um, it's a secure facility, and so um, we can walk out if we need to, um, but not just anybody can walk in. Um, and there's very few people on our list who are not allowed to walk in, but we do have a couple of them. So we'd like to make sure that that's the locked door. Um, so you come in and it says Youth Impact, a safe place to be a kid. Um, and it's usually really, really loud when you walk in. Um, we have our cafeteria in the front room. Um, and then to the left is our read and respond area. It's a big area with couches. Um, and that's where our elementary students go to read every single day. And our Read and Respond program is really cool because they um, they help. So in the Ogden School District, every kid has to read for 20 to 30 minutes every single day. And we figure it's better for them to read with us at Youth Impact. Um, and that way we can kind of see where they're at academically. Um, and we know that it's going to get done before they get home. 
um, and they do their little writing sheet. So they read, write a few sentences, four sentences about what they read. And then our reading response staff, they take them out to eat every month, our top readers. Wow. Lawrence great. Dillons, thank you for sponsoring that. There's, there's another, yeah, there's another, another great partnership. sponsor, absolutely. Um, and so that's our read and respond area. You walk through, there's our sign-in desk. There's always staff at the sign-in desk to help you out if you have any questions. Our kids have to sign in every single day, and that's where our volunteers sign in as well. We get about 300 volunteers a year from Weber State, which is so helpful, and it's nice. Um, we get everywhere from intro to communications volunteers to um, practicum students that need 180 hours. And that was going to be my next question. Are they in, you know, in this uh, arena of study, so to speak, you know, of education, those kinds of things? Yes, most of them. Um, the next area is our science learning area, and we get volunteers from Weber State um, in the zoology department. Wow. So it's a little bit random. It doesn't really go with Okay, zoology, working with kids, kind of, right. sometimes, but um, <laughs> <laughs> but they'll bring in a tarantula or a giant snake. They brought in a giant yellow snake, or they brought in miniature, I think they were called pygmy goats, and the kids can look at those, and their um, community service for the zoology program is they have to present it to somebody, and so they bring it to Youth Impact and present it to our kids and teach them about different animals. So we get kind of all different kinds of volunteers. Most of our volunteers are from Weber State, and we have a few that are community volunteers who are with us very loyally. You know, and you're starting to hear a common theme um, with Weber State working with uh, various organizations in the Ogden area. So we're really appreciative of the students, faculty, uh, the school, in, you know, everything about Weber State, of what they're doing with Ogden City. So we appreciate that. And um, so... We've, you're taking us in. We looked at the, the science or the, the science learning, science area. learning yeah. area, right? Okay, now, um, you guys used to do something with bicycles. Mm -hmm. Do you still do that? We do. Can you tell us a little bit about that? That's in our bike shop. So we get um, some more of our friends with the Ogden Police Department. Oh, it's, <laughs> it's nice. It really is nice. So um, there's some unclaimed bicycles with Ogden Police Department and they get a lot of them um, that turn up and they'll give them to us and some of them are complete bikes ready to go and some of them need a little bit of love um, so our kids can work in our bike shop and learn how to put bikes together with our staff and they teach them with the tools okay so I donated this bike um, it was a little Schwinn with the handlebars and the banana seat Oh, had, that's a classic. Yeah. yeah. And, but it was tiny, and it said Jenny on the license plate. <laughs> it was really it yours? Was, yeah, it was really, it was small. It was pink, okay? So this kid, um, I donated it to the program, and this kid, a high school kid, he got the handlebars a little bit higher. He covered up the jelly beans that were on the seat um, <laughs> <laughs> with a bandana and curled it under. Um painted it gold and scraped it down to the chrome and it was it was like so tricked out it looked so good and it looked so different and this kid created something out of that and so that's what they do all the time they can take parts and kind of make it their own and that particular kid he got so good he was making bikes left and right and he was bringing them home um, he was living at a trailer park at the time. Uh -huh. So every time our van would pull through that trailer park up to his house, all the kids in the park would run up to the van and see who was next, who got a new bike wow. next. And so he was like the Santa Claus coming home every week with a new bike. Tricked out bikes. That he was making in our program that we have so many that we can do that. Um, but basically, any kid can make a bike in the program. And with 10 hours of community service, they can take it home. And um, we're big on community service. Oh, absolutely. They, they helped us with uh, some things with Sundance Film Institute a few years ago. Uh, they were the ambassadors uh, for Ogden, so they were welcoming all these people that came from all over, sometimes all over the world, uh, from Park City, all over the place. And um, the Youth Impact uh, kids were out there with their, their ambassador vests on. It was really cool. Uh, now, I wanted to ask you, how many uh, paid staff do you have? 
prep facility? I think we have about 19 paid staff. The majority of them are work study from Weber State right now. Um, I think we have uh, about six full-time staff right now. Okay. So with uh, with all the kids and the chaos, sometimes you said it gets a little loud in there. Mm -hmm. How is the work environment for the staff? You know, how do you enjoy working there? Oh my gosh, I love working there. I love working at Youth Impact, and I feel like like that family atmosphere that I was talking about. Mm -hmm. So the staff will hang out sometimes after work and have a barbecue um, in our back garden. Um, that's the best part when people walk out that back door to the garden and it um the fence goes out to the field the baseball field raptors stadium and so we can see sometimes baseball games or practices and stuff like that and we'll barbecue out there but a lot of the staff we all hang out with each other when we're not at work but there's seriously some people in that program you get close enough that they're like your family and so it's hard to look at it as a job sometimes well and you know based on the the description it doesn't i mean it i don't want to say it doesn't sound like a job but it sounds like it, it's so much more mm -hmm. you know there's there's so much more there's it sounds like you have all these connections going on and uh, that's really cool so you have uh people that volunteer you've got um businesses that help sponsor um you've got kids that you're working with so all these these connections going around um now i'd like to find out a little bit about who are these kids that you guys are you know um providing all these services and, and, and your time with. Who are they? Well, we've got a few of them. Um, and all of them are coming from different situations in life. The majority of our kids are from um, Ogden's inner city. Mm -hmm. um, the vast majority of our kids are extreme poverty. Um, their families have an income of $10,000 or less per year. Um, so that has a huge impact on our kids um, and what their what kind of um, resources are available to them. And so we try and make those resources available to them. Every once in a while we're stopping at the store and getting shoes or we're getting clothes um, for the kids that come in that need it. Um, we have kind of a high incarceration rate with our parents in the program. Um, and a little bit of gang association with the families in our program. Um, but the goal, the Youth Impact Program works as a preventative program. And so we're not an intervention. We're not getting kids that are in trouble. We're not getting kids that need community service hours or the courts ordering them to come to Youth Impact. They're coming because their families want something different for these kids. And they come in, um, sorry, I get kind of emotional about this. You can get all emotional. <laughs> I'm getting emotional because it's amazing. Yeah. Um, but the goal is you're going to do something different. And the kids are going to do something different. Um, so they're going to get up every morning in the summertime. They're going to come to the program. And they're going to go hiking on Tuesdays. And they're going to do cardio club or fishing club. Or they're going to... Um, just hang out with the Youth Impact family, and it's such a positive influence on them. Um, and they're doing community service, and not because they're in trouble, but because they want to help, and they want to make something different for themselves, and they want to make Ogden a better place to live. Like our kids, sometimes we're bored. Let's all get some trash pickers, and we'll walk down 25th Street. That's an hour of community service. We're going to walk around and pick up trash, and... Not because we have to, just because we want to. Mm -hmm. um, the kids are incredible, and every time I take them out into public, people are amazed, and I think for a couple reasons, I think because our kids are so well-behaved, and I think that sometimes there's a stereotype with the kind of kids that we have. Um, well, and can I touch on that a little bit? Yeah. So um, they had their straight-A kids come to Rovelli's Ristorante for a, a dinner, and my wife was there mm -hmm. uh, working that night. And she came back that, that evening, and, and, and she just told me she just couldn't stop talking about it. She just said they were so well-behaved. She couldn't believe it. You know, it was just an amazing um, uh, opportunity to have them there. 
And I didn't prompt her about anything. All I knew is that you guys were coming, yeah. you know, and we wanted to do the special menu thing you talked about. But, but when she came back, she was just really happy of, of how well beha- behaved they were. And and they were so appreciative, too. Yeah. So it wasn't just like, okay, well, we ate, you know, we're out of here. It was like they were just ladies and gentlemen. That's that's yeah. how she put it. They were they were great little ladies and gentlemen. Totally. And um, they help with the... Um the garden tour, the Ogden garden tour, um, and every time that we're out there, they're sitting at mansions, giant mansions on the front lawn. Here's a pamphlet, you know, here's where the, you go to the next house, and people are just like, who are these kids? They're so sweet. You know, and I think that people get these preconceived notions, like mm-hmm. poor people might act like this, or, right. you know, but they're great. They're great, and I think that... Well, I know that the Youth Impact Program has a lot to do with that. You know, we expect, we have high expectations for them. If you're going to be in the program, you're going to be respectful. And you don't have a choice. Like, you're going to be a respectful person. And let's teach you what respect means. And you're going to learn social skills. And you're going to learn how to look somebody in the eye and shake their hand when you meet them. Um, our Youth in Transition class, um, that's for our high school kids. And you've worked with the youth in transition class. So that's all of our 9th through 12th graders. We say, okay, this is what life is going to be like after high school. Let's talk about interview skills. Let's talk about college. Let's talk about scholarships. All of you can get scholarships. You know, let's get some money for you to go to college. And um, that, I think, has a lot to do with how successful they are after high school as well. Yes, absolutely. So when youth are in... um, It's not called St. Anne's anymore. The Lantern House? Yes. um, We will take them if they want to be in the Youth Impact Program. And if they're at the YCC, the Women's Shelter, Mm -hmm. we will take them automatically. And we just had the YCC on last week. Yeah? Yeah. That's that's a great place. And the thing is, with programs like that, when they can work with programs like ours, um, we watch their kids all day for free. And it gives those people a chance to kind of get on their feet again. Because if you have three, four kids and you're suddenly in a shelter escaping an unhealthy situation, with those three, four kids, how are you supposed to get out and find your own own job and be successful with that or find an apartment? And so I just think about the people in those situations are really grateful to have the program. Because, you know, if they can send their kid to school in the morning, 7, 38 in the morning, and many of them have breakfast at school and lunch at school, and then they come to Youth Impact right after and have dinner with us and take them home at 7, 30 at night, that's a lot of time to get your stuff together. Yeah. And we've absolutely. seen families be really successful with that. Yeah, excellent. Well, I want to move into um, uh, when I talked to Rob today, um, he had mentioned the educational part what you guys are doing and there's a you're going to be doing some building is that correct that's the goal yes okay so tell us a little bit about the educational part. i know you touched on it a little bit and then the, uh, your your credentials and so forth and what weaver state's bringing to the to the table but you know uh how important is that educational piece to youth impact and and your part of what you do the educational part is so cool, and I think that it's cool to a lot of people, and not just me, because I'm a teacher and a nerd like that. But um, so I told you we track all of our kids. Mm-hmm. So 160 kids in the program, and they're all tracked by different people. So we'll just take the high school kids because that's my that's my babies, okay. the ninth through twelfth graders. So um, we've tracked them um, since I. Since I've been there, I have, like, my own statistics. So in the past five years, um, we can see an increase every single year of their GPAs and their attendance. And right now, um, our high school kids' average GPA is a 3.8. Wow. That is impressive. And that's that's so high for <laughs> any kid. Yeah, but for kids that are at risk and high risk, you know, you're – parent is in jail and you know you're dealing with this and you live in extreme poverty and you're out of the shelter you know and you have a 3.8 gpa and 100 percent attendance in school wow. you know that's something to keep you moving forward 
And you just see with that, the kids tend to stay out of trouble. They're involved in sports, and we have kids in AP classes and honors classes. Um, so yeah, our program is 98%, average 98% attendance in school. Um, and our goal was 90% because that's what Ogden School District's goal was. Right. And so we're like, okay, Ogden School District, can you give us some numbers? We want to see how we compare, you mm. know? And we said, oh, you know, we're doing great. We're almost at that 90%. We've got 89. And we're at, <laughs> we're at 98. And so what's great, too, with um, the school district is they can – have their counselors call us and say, Hey, I think I have this kid that would be a good fit for the program, you know? And like, if we, if we could somehow, if we got that building, for example, we could get more kids in the program. Which building are you referring to? So, um, they want to build this educational building. Okay. And that's the goal. Um, it's a little bit expensive, so it's kind of, we're working on it, or moving forward, and trying to get it done. Would you would you be going down the same channels, like, uh, for example, a charter school? Um, you know that that they may go down to get funding uh, to build a charter school because I've seen a number of charter schools from North Ogden to you know various areas, I and, think and they're nice buildings. Yeah, <laughs> I think it's something that Rob has looked at, but I don't know if we're going that avenue right now. Right, we've talked about it. Um, like, if we could do something just with Youth Impact Kids, let us do an alternative school just for Youth Impact Kids. But I don't know if that's the goal right now. The goal is to look at how good we're doing and look at how good we're doing with academics, and we need more space. Because right now our study hall is open for a few hours, and then we have Girl Scouts on a certain night. Mm -hmm. Or open for a few hours, and then we have some guest speakers from the communication. We don't have a lot of space so we're kind of stepping over each other in the study hall and we're thinking if we can get more people more space it can be more effective you know and if we got more kids from Ogden School District eventually we would be helping their statistics and their graduation rates and stuff like that as well Absolutely. I think oh yeah I, I, I would and you know one thing about their facility it, it's a good sized facility and they use like every square inch you know, there's no wasted space there. I've been in there and I've toured the whole thing and even the garden area. You know, yeah. you guys are growing stuff. Uh -huh. So, uh, you know, um, how can how can the community help you? You know, what what is what are the things that you need that people that are just learning about you? Uh, maybe volunteering time, uh, you know, uh, donations, you know. What's the best way for people to, to help you impact? Well, there's so many different ways. And we like people to come into Youth Impact and find something that they feel passionate about, um, if they have time to. Um, I like skateboarding, and so that's another one of my clubs that I do is I take um, kids skateboarding around Ogden. We go on the Ogden River Parkway. It's really fun and smooth and easy to do. Um, but skateboards are super expensive, mm -hmm. really expensive. And the longboards are really, really expensive. Um, and we can't afford to buy them. So we started um, a new program where the kids are able to build longboards. And I can't think of the name of his nonprofit right now. Um, that's not good. But we're able to build longboards with the kids. And we the last class we did, we had seven kids in the class. And they all got to build. They sand the longboard down and they paint it and they add the trucks and wheels um, and now they're part of my longboard club once a week, once a week too and that's so I got riders, riders. riders but the next but class class not able to not able to get funding for it so we've told people if you're interested you can donate one time one hundred dollars that's it and that sponsors a kid to make their own longboard and that pays for parts basically um, and that's an easy way to donate and to really like change a kid's life because these kids want to do that kind of stuff but it's so expensive how, you much, know, how much pride do they take when they build their own board i was so think cool about that yeah <laughs> i mean and the pride to i i saw a kid on saturday riding his at the farmer's market on 25th street you know riding around oh my longboard oh yeah and it's so cute to see 
you know, like as a parent, you know, you want to try and provide that kind of stuff to your kids if they want to do it. And that's kind of how I feel at Youth Impact. Like if the kids want to do something, we try everything we can to let them do it. Right. Um, but so that would be one avenue that they could take. Or if they wanted to come down and spend some time. So you like to garden and you can come down and walk around the garden with the kids and pick some strawberries and teach them how to make strawberry rhubarb pie, stuff like that. Or um, call Youth Impact and you want to start a class or you want to teach the kids a skill. We have a guy who's an engineer, a retired engineer. He has a rocket club and I think it's his second year and it's been really successful. He takes the kids out and they launch rockets and some of them are this tall and some of them are as tall as me and you, so it's cool. Anybody who wants to be a part of the program, uh, we want to try and let you do that. And so whether it's time or whether it's money or whether it's um, clothes, gently used clothes or shoes, because we're constantly using those too. Okay. And and there's sounds like there's many ways to do it, and they're open to, you know, uh, like she said, call you the impact. What would, what's the phone number to call? It is 801-612-3001. So you can call them anytime, and we will post uh, links to their website. Um, uh, are you guys on social media? Are you doing anything in that arena? Yeah, we're on Facebook. Okay. Um, it's Youth Impact Ogden, I believe, on Facebook. Maybe it's Youth Impact Inc. Um, but you'll see our little red, white, and blue logo. And then... Um, youthimpactogden.org is our website and that's kind of more of a comprehensive um, idea of what our program's all about. So it talks about where we started at the little Episcopal church from across the street and how we moved into our facility where we are now. Um, and it talks about all of our programs, um, how to donate, all of that, what we need. So we will have all those links posted down below. And uh, so you can just click on the links and get in touch with Youth Impact because uh, it's uh, it's super important what they're doing. Uh, it helps the community grow uh, from the inside out. And it gives uh, these youth that may not have opportunities, tremendous opportunities. I mean, to build your own uh, longboard, skateboard, uh, to fix your own, you know, to fix bikes. Um, all these stories that, uh, that she has shared with us is, is just amazing. And it's really... Uh, you know, it's it's um, you know, it touches the heart, and and we're not looking at for you know just to tug on the heartstrings. You know, what we're looking at is is proven you know techniques of what these guys are doing of, of well mannered children, uh, high GPA scores, mm -hmm. all of these things, higher uh, graduation rates, everything like that is positive Ogden and Twenty Five Drive Live. That's our mantra, everything positive Ogden. So with Youth Impact um, being one of the driving force, and they're, loca they're located right down in inner city Ogden yeah. as well. You know, uh, some of the, uh, when I first met Rob, um, when I heard the story of how he got that building, <laughs> that was amazing too. Yeah. You know, so they got this great facility. Um, it is secured. So if you have a child that uh, you think they're interested in what the impact is doing, this is the place to go because they're going to they're gonna take care of the kids. They're going to teach them. They're going to show them things that uh, maybe they've never experienced before, snowboarding up a powder mountain. Um, and if you are interested in helping to teach or speak or donate or all, there's probably a thousand different ways to help youth impact. And... Um, and so I would encourage you guys, get involved with youth, youth Impact one way or another because it will be to the betterment of, uh, of our youth and it will be the, to the betterment of Ogden as a whole. And so um, I just want to thank you for coming by and sharing this. Thanks because, for having me. Yeah, it's just a, it was an amazing conversation. I learned a lot. I thought I knew uh, a lot about what you guys are doing, but some of the stuff you were telling me um, was very powerful. Um, and the results uh, was even more amazing to me. And, and so I appreciate what you guys are doing. And uh, before we leave, I would like you to tell uh, everyone where your facility is located, the address and everything like that. Yeah, we are located 2305 Grant Avenue. And like I said before, it's on the corner, 23rd and Grant. And it's right behind the uh, the parking structure. The movie theater. From the junction. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. yeah. It's a cool building, and it's very unassuming. Uh, like she said, she's got, they've got the, like, they're almost like a reflective brick glass Yeah. Walls. Oh, we, we, you can't see the sign <laughs> unless you're right in front of it. <laughs> That's right. But we kind of like to remain a little bit yeah. secretive in our spot, I yeah. guess. So, but, yeah, yeah it's, uh, you know, once you, once you get behind the, the parking structure, it's right there. Um, and they're more than anxious to, to talk to you. Uh, once again, we want to thank everybody that's been involved with Youth Impact, from the sponsors to the volunteers uh, to Weber State University, um, all of these folks, restaurants that have helped, uh, people that have just reached out to a kid and you know, um, you know, and just uh, said, "Well done," because all that stuff matters. So once again, thank Seriously. you for joining us. Thank you, and thank you. All right. To everybody who helps. Absolutely. And um, we will have another episode for you guys next week, so make sure you tune in. And please, please, please subscribe to 25 Drive Live. Thank you, and we'll see you again. Bye. Bye.